Okay guys, in the next step on our PC building tutorial today will be to apply a very thick coating of mayonnaise on our CPU. And after applying the mayonnaise, actually what we will then do is take the whole jar. Uh, you're going to want to dump a large amount of mayonnaise on all of your fans. This helps to lubricate the bearings, uh, lubricates the air as it goes across the fan. You really can't have too much mayonnaise uh, on your computer. It's, uh, it's an underappreciated uh, tool, but we should really just coat everything in the computer in mayonnaise. And then in fact what you can do is actually just leave the jar open and, and leave it inside the computer in case you need some later on. Uh, don't worry about securing it or anything like that. Um, a, a loose jar of mayonnaise inside your computer is fine because it, it's a desktop. It's not like you're going to carry it around or bring it anywhere or anything like that. So just leaving loose things inside of it, you're, you're fine. You don't have to worry about like mayonnaise shorting out the boards or anything like that. <laughs> what is up guys? It is Medic, MedicX21. Uh, this is the podcast where I have no clue what I'm talking about, but I'm really good at, at Googling stuff and just making shit up on the fly. And um, I hope you I hope you found that as funny as I did. Um, I just I I had to make I had to make this podcast. Um, so I, I, if you haven't heard, um, I, I'm sure you have. If you've been on YouTube and you do anything tech on YouTube, you've already seen this and heard of it about the Verge and the YouTube copyright strikes going against people. And um, I I'm gonna be straight with you. So the first video that I saw about this was from uh, Boogie on uh, YouTube. I really like his YouTube stuff. Um, I definitely get some good ideas from him for the podcast. So I hope he never finds me and never calls me out on it because then I won't have a podcast anymore. But um, I, I, I love his YouTube videos, absolutely love his YouTube videos. And um, I saw the video a couple days ago, and um, he was talking about um, Kyle over at Bitwit. Uh, no, I'm sorry, he talked about uh, Rich over at uh, Review Tech USA. He talked about uh, how Rich got a copyright strike from The Verge on doing a com commentary video or critiquing video um, on a PC building tutorial that they did that uh, I actually have never seen and never heard of. This was, I guess, back in September or he made the video back in September. Uh, so th this is months ago at this point. We're, we're in February of the next year right now. So, I mean, we're th this was a while ago. I'd never seen the video, never heard of the video, and it, it really had no effect on, on my life or anything. And then uh, I saw Boogie's video on it, talked about how uh, Rich got a strike and... Um, talked about some fair the the laws of fair use and stuff like that and um i i gotta be honest when i first saw the video my first thought was all right that that sucks you know i mean like uh, i'm sure he'll pull through he seems like a pretty good youtuber and stuff like that and then um very shortly after i ended up seeing another video from paul's hardware where he talked about how uh kyle from bitwit also got a strike and then um Gotta love YouTube's uh, analytics or uh, YouTube's algorithms, that is, um, because then my feeds are popping up with, with tons of these things, tons of the critiquing videos, and then people talking about the copyright strikes and all these things are popping up. And you gotta love it when the algorithm kind of works, you know? And uh, then I started looking into it more, and I'm like, wow, there, there might be more to this. And um, so I, I started to go down the rabbit hole a little bit. And... Um, I just want to say this now because we're, we're early into the podcast. Stick with me for this episode because I have such a tinfoil hat perspective on some of this too that I haven't heard anyone bring up just yet, which makes me super excited to do this episode. So, so stick with it, I swear. But let's pull back and let's talk about what's going on. What happened was, um, I guess The Verge, which I believe is a... I don't know if it's a sister company or part of a company under the company, but I believe Vox Media is is like the company, and then you have The Verge, which uh, they have a it's a YouTube channel and uh, also a website where they do um, I don't want to call them blogs, but there there's lots of articles there, uh, there's lots of articles on their site, and I'm sure when I started looking around, I'm like, oh, I've definitely have heard of this, you know, I just never never realized it, right? You just kind of find an article, read the article, and you move on with life. So I never really knew anything about this. Never, like if you had told me the name, I never would have recognized it until all of this. And uh, so what they did was they, they made an article, a PC building tutorial article, 
And then apparently they were sponsored by Capital One to produce a video. And um, although I have not seen the actual video, I've seen clips, commentaries, uh, they have actually pulled down the video. So even if I were to look for it, it would only be like a re-upload video. Um, so I have not seen the original video. But uh, apparently it was sponsored by Capital One. It was a very good production video. However, it had tons of errors in the video. So it's one of those things like it looked beautiful, it looked well produced, but it was error filled. And um, when I say error filled, um, I, like I said, I, I haven't seen the whole video, so I can only go by the things that I read and, and I've heard, but I've heard it from so many credible sources that I feel comfortable bringing up some of these things is um, some of the issues uh, I found on Paul's hardware actually is where I pulled some of these issues from. And I didn't even list all the ones that, that he found. These are just the ones that I was like, I wouldn't call myself an expert. However, I, I, I would say that I'm fairly knowledgeable on building computers. And um, some of the things that, that he said, you know, and, and he brought up a really good point. So this is Paul's hardware, right? So good points that he brought up right at the beginning was that even though these mistakes were made, a company of this size, they should have been caught because this type of video has a director or lead directors, even editors that, that went through all these videos, the writers that produce these videos. This isn't a guy like myself who's doing this all by myself and I have to like do my own research, sit down and produce it, you know, and where I can totally miss some of these errors. This is a company. These are people that produce this video, right? So you, I guess it's fair to say you kind of have high expectations that this tutorial build would be a pretty solid tutorial then. You know, this isn't me grabbing my computer out of my basement, finding some parts and be like, hey, I'm gonna make a video on how to put together this, this you know, uh, Pentium 2 uh, system, you know? So some of the things he, he mentioned was, I, I guess the, and I'm just gonna go by the list that I wrote it down, so there's no order on here, but I guess um, at one point in the video at the beginning, um, he picked up like cable ties, but called them tweezers, so you can already tell ahead of time this was, I don't know, I don't know. But I'm guessing like it was probably like an actor reading a script and must have picked up the wrong thing because I just, I don't know how you can look at a zip tie and think that those are tweezers, you know, unless he wasn't looking at what he was doing and he was just super focused on the script. I don't know, I didn't see the video, but I just, I heard it from more than Paul's hardware was that I guess he referred to the cable ties as tweezers. Um, the real kicker, and I don't, I don't even know, I would love to figure out the reasoning or the thought or how this occurred, but apparently he said um, to, to put on an anti-static wristband and he proceeded to put on a rubber bracelet, one of those like Livestrong bracelets. And I'm like, and I've seen it, like I've seen the clips of it, like there's lots of clips of it. So it happened. This isn't something making up, this happened. And I'm just like looking at it like, what? Like, well, how did that occur? Like, was this a joke that they just forgot to laugh or something like that? Like... I, I don't, that one blows me away. I just, I couldn't, I saw the clip, so I can't even say that didn't happen, you know? Um, I guess apparently when he put it together, the, the RAM, and I guess this is one of those, like, I, the reason why I wrote this down, because some of the other things I, I didn't include, but he, when he put the RAM in, I guess they were in the wrong slots. Now, I have totally done this before, not paying attention or not knowing, um, but apparently he didn't put them in the right slots, therefore it wouldn't um, utilize dual channel memory, so you wouldn't be getting the most performance out of it. Now, although I wouldn't call it a nitpicky thing because it is an important thing. However, I feel like it's one of those things like when you're producing a, a video of that value, it probably not only should it have been correct, but they actually should have explained why it's correct. That way when people put their computers together later on, because some other boards are a little different. And I know I have had to look at my manuals to find out which channels to use. Um, that would have been a great opportunity for them to explain that so that people would pull out their manuals and realize that there is useful information in those manuals and not every motherboard is the same. So I, I, I felt like that was a pretty important to add. Um, apparently when he when he put the, uh, the, the AIO onto the CPU, apparently he used like way too much thermal paste and from like the fact that I heard it from more than just Paul's hardware was I wish I could find the clip because I would love to know how much thermal paste he used because um, I know like Jay's Two Cents did some pretty funny videos about thermal paste and applying it and how to apply and stuff like that. And the application, although yes, there's good and better ways to do it, it it's not gonna kill you, you know, by not putting it on perfect. 
However, using too much can certainly cause you issues, especially if you have poor um, skills at the beginning and later on you decide to expand on your knowledge and expand, uh, decide to expand on your build and you go to something like a liquid metal because liquid metal will totally screw your system if if you get it onto your board and stuff like that. So it's, it's good to have good habits from the beginning and understand why you have good habits from the beginning. So the too much thermal paste, especially on a tutorial of this quality, that's kind of a big issue. Apparently, and I wish I could find the clip and I couldn't find that as well. Apparently when he put the radiator on, uh, he didn't include the fans with the radiator, but I guess like, I don't want to say shove the screws, but apparently use the long screws which are, are made to connect to the radiator with the fans in between the case and the radiator but without those fans you don't have that gap and you can totally over screw those screws into the radiator and damage the radiator put a hole in your radiator hello it's an aio it's got liquid in it so that was one of those like when i heard that i was like oh wow i would have loved to have seen that because then i also like how far did he screw these things in like do he screw it straight through the radiator then because if he didn't like you've got a gap there for your fans so like i i wish i could find the clip to find out like is this radiator just kind of hanging out now or did he screw it through straight through the radiator and then if he did like how did nobody see this or know this so i, I don't know but i wish i found that and um he uh i guess he had a modular and i did see pictures on this he had a modular power supply that he plugged all of the cables to, whether needed or not, and did no cable management. I saw the pictures of it, and they were very cringeworthy pictures. I'm not going to say my cable management is perfect. I'd like to think that I have good cable management. Uh, I've seen really good cable management, very impressive cable management. I like to think mine is okay, though. But when I saw this for a tutorial, I was like, this is a joke. Like, what a, like this is the before picture, right? And I'm looking at like, oh no, this was the completed picture. Like, there's no way this is the completed picture. This has to be the before and after build. Like, no, there's no after. That's the build. So those are some of the uh, the issues. Oh, and I guess he put his um the the power supply was put in wrong too. So the airflow was uh not optimal, I guess. So, uh, but I didn't notice that in the picture. I was just staring at the at the cable management too much, and that's when I lost it. So th those are some of the issues, in it. and there are actually a lot more issues. Those were the issues that I uh, heard of that I thought were very pertinent issues because, uh, again, I go back to a quality video. This was not like me making this video. And I say me, I'm not a big YouTuber. I'm not a big content creator. Um, I, you know, I don't have production on my side. I don't have staff on my side, right? So not to say it would be okay to make those mistakes. They should get caught, but... I feel like the level of acceptance should be a little bit more lenient on guys like me. Um, so they they definitely, when the video came out, people were slamming it, slamming it good. It became a, a big source of memes. Um, and then people started, YouTubers started making critique videos on this. And this is where I'll get into the critique videos and talking about fair use. Uh, so... I mean, that, this is the thing with, with the internet and YouTube and content creators and quality content creators is critiquing things, uh, collaborating together and improving things. And um, what a lot of these bigger YouTubers did was they actually, they critiqued the videos and they talked about, well, here's the things that they did wrong. Don't do these things. And and I don't, I didn't see their videos because I mean, they're, they're, they're struck. So I can't see the ones that I've mentioned. Plus there's a few more out there and I just, there's so much going on. There's so many videos that I feel like I, I've already been well over a day into looking into all of this stuff. And there's so much more out, out there. Just stay, I would say go hit YouTube and go look at some of these videos. Um, but they did critique videos on this. And what they did was, uh, especially I guess, uh, Rich's channel on over review tech USA was, um, he commentated and used clips on the video, things that are, totally within the law and i am not a lawyer don't know a ton about the law i did some light research on this but it's covered in fair use because fair use uh without a direct quote says that um using clips and commentating on other content is covered under fair use because you're, you're allowed to talk and discuss and show what you're talking about as long as you're not taking the entire thing and monetizing off of somebody else's um production value or somebody else's content right but when you take it in clips or you um talk about it you you can that's fair use you can totally do that and to to 
further discuss on that, um, H3H3 Productions, a YouTube channel, um, actually had a lawsuit uh, from a gentleman who um, they what they did was they they did a 13 minute video uh, critiquing. I guess it was a scripted parkour challenge, and they they critiqued I guess the video and the content creator, and that content creator actually sued them. And uh, some of the things in the claim was uh, that that it was uh, copyright, and uh, they had copyright strike on their channel. And also things like defamation of character and, and uh, not discrimination, but but so, so along those lines. And in court, it was actually everything was dismissed. And it was ruled this is totally fair use. They used clips. They commentated. It was a critique. They did not steal his content. And uh, this totally falls into to fair use. And although you may not like what somebody is saying about you, um, you, it's it's when they talk about things that they didn't like that's their opinion and this isn't a defamation there's a difference between going out and saying this person is this and here's some type of thing to make up or something you know making up something this if, if you take something that exists and shows that you're not it, it exists it's when you're making up stuff and you're trying to well defamate someone like you're you're trying you, you know you're using false information to do it but when you're taking critiques and you're taking these things that actually exist it's it's fair use and um this was a big deal because when they won the lawsuit tons of article and information came out about how this supports youtubers this supports content creators because now like we know we can use clips of things it is fair use to use clips it is fair use um to critique things and that's good critiquing is good i literally have a podcast of where I debate and then request that you guys talk to me about it and and constructively criticize me on things. In fact, this YouTube, which actually, uh, I'm sorry, this this podcast, which actually isn't even released yet, um, I'm getting, I'm produ I, I'm setting everything up to, these are the very early episodes of the podcast, but I'm actually sending it out to all of my friends and essentially telling them, rip me apart on this, be polite and you know, take my feelings into account, but let me know what to do to make these better. Do they need to be shorter, longer, talk louder, talk quieter, uh, just don't be me. You know, um, you know, so con constructive criticism, critiquing is great. This is how you make things better. It is good. And to stop someone from doing it is like saying, well, this is the way and we just won't change. And, and that's just to me is absurd. So they, they had this video, which was just from <laughs> what it sounds like was just not a very good video, not a very good video. And these guys started making critique videos. I think their critique videos are good because now you can look at these and go, okay, this is how I shouldn't do it. And maybe this is how I do do it. And by using their video, they could actually see what they did wrong and how they could do it better because not everyone's going to have the same system. But if you're looking at theirs, and you're like, oh, well, they did it this way. But now he says, no, you actually should do it this way. And this is why. That's it. You learn from it. It's so much better to learn from Learn from people's mistakes. I tell people my mistakes all the time. I, uh, I'm actually a career paramedic. I've been doing it for 10 years. And uh, I, I spent five years teaching. And I was, I'm very open about my mistakes. These are mistakes. In fact, when I would teach, um, I would tell people, this is a mistake that I made. This is what happened. This is what I did. This is what I learned from it. Don't make my mistake. Because it, it, it was always absurd to me to have mistakes happen twice just because you're you're trying to cover it up or hide it or something like that. Mistakes happen. It's life, man. It's, it's, it's going to happen. And... Um, you know, so when you have like critique videos, I think these are great. So to be copyright striking these, you know, is it hurts the system by doing this. So Kyle and uh, Rich, they they got hit with copyright strikes. And um, as, as I scro scroll down on my notes, um, I, I wrote down here, I want you to understand the difference between copyright strikes or takedowns versus a copyright flag or a claim. So on YouTube, um, they they have systems in place that will automatically find videos that are the same or that may be uh, copyright infringements, and their their systems automate uh, automate this to make it so that you may not have um, be able to get revenue from a particular video. Um, but the video still stays up and it essentially doesn't hurt your channel. It just, you may not be able to monetize on that particular video. On my YouTube channel, uh, I used to upload lots of stuff from my Twitch streams. And a lot of times I would play like uh, music in the background, most of the time from like Monster Cat or YouTube, uh, other YouTube videos and stuff like that. And uh, I've had tons of videos that my, that, um, I wouldn't be able to monetize on if I could monetize. 
but it otherwise didn't affect my channel. Okay, you know, I mean, yeah, I had some music going in the background. It's a music channel. Like, I'm all right, I'm okay with that, you know. But um, a copyright strike or a takedown uh, not only removes that video from the channel, but it can affect the YouTuber's monetization abilities, and it can also affect their abilities to live stream on YouTube, which a lot of these bigger content creators do happen to do regular routine live streams. And that can be a, live streaming can be a big source of income for some of these people. And uh, to have those things get affected just off of one strike, you could be talking at hundreds or thousands of dollars depending on the content creator. And I know if you told me right now that I was still gonna have to go to work this weekend, but because somebody claims something on me, I won't get most of my paycheck or something like that, even if, even if I feel like it's unfair, um, well, I would still have to go to work and I still have to collect the paycheck. But if you told me my paycheck's reduced, that, that's going to hurt me. That's going to hurt me so much. And same thing with these content creators is what they do for their career, right? So even the, the problem is, is that even if the content creator knows that they've done nothing wrong, they, they can dispute it. The problem is, is that the disputing process can take one to three months to be able to get forced to be reversed and the content creators have the strikes against them have to do more than what the original the disputer has to do to strike them so it's fairly easy to have a strike on you but very difficult to get that strike removed because you have to uh, I guess you have to give YouTube lots of personal information. You may actually even have to give the other content creator lots of personal information. You may have to get lawyers involved on some of this stuff. Um, this could spend months and hundreds of dollars or even thousands of dollars to get reversed, even knowing that you've done nothing wrong. And uh, I guess YouTube's, the, the system in place for YouTube um, doesn't protect, protect the content creators from strikes. And, you know, I get it. Like, I feel like if people were stealing my content, I would definitely want something in place to protect me so that I can continue to monetize off of my original content. However, it hurts. It hurts to know that it's fairly easy for someone to just claim something and it's you're proven guilty. Um, you're, you're guilty until proven innocent. This is how this is set up. This is, and this is, I've heard it from lots of YouTubers. I've been hearing it for a while. Uh, I'll even talk about my channel, why I, I stopped doing stuff on YouTube, but I've been here. Thanks for a while. You're guilty until proven innocent. And, um, it can, it, it's hard, you know, and um, I'll talk about my channel. So I actually, um, I live stream on Twitch. I like to play video games and stuff like that. But um, over the summer last year, I um, I decided, I was like, well, hey, you know, YouTube might be something that I want to do. You know, maybe maybe the live stream grind of a set schedule, not very flexible, kind of stuck to doing certain things. Like maybe YouTube might be better for me. But I just, I don't want to do gaming content you know i don't i don't want to do games on youtube you know i feel like there's just an abundance of those channels i don't think there's anything super special about me to be to really set me aside from these other channels but another thing that i'm passionate about is i, I like to vape i'm a vapor and it's I think for what it is but i um i'm very interested in vaping tanks mods juices coils uh pod systems uh, i find them all very intriguing very interesting things and um i decided i was like well hey i could do i could do review videos because i actually had some computer part review videos that actually had lots of views on them more, more than anything for any of my gaming stuff um i mean i literally had a mouse that i just picked up one day and was like i like this gaming mouse and i talked about it for five minutes and although a few years old, it had a couple thousand views. And I'm like, I literally picked up this mouse and was like, yeah, here's this mouse from some company. It's a $10 mouse, but it's got DPI settings and I like it. Da, 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 da. And like a couple thousand views. Whereas some of my gaming stuff, which I found some of them, these hysterical clips, also one to two years old, uh, two to three years old at least. And they'd have like 30 views on it, you know? So I'm like, okay, maybe reviews is the way to go. And I like vaping stuff. So I started making vape videos and the vape videos were getting 
decent views for for being a small channel again i i have just over 100 sus subscribers on youtube i am not a youtuber i'm not a content creator on youtube right so i'm talking when i talk about this like i only have a little over 100 subscribers um so when you say you only have 100 subscribers but then i say like i do a review on a mod and in six months i have like seven thousand views on that to me that is substantial that is a huge number right there. That's one of my most viewed videos in my channel. I've got stuff in there that's well over five years old that don't have those views. So I was doing these these videos and um, I actually stopped doing reviews on vape hardware because there's so much coming out right now about legislation against vaping, um, anti-vaping, and it's being compared to smoking. And I'm not going to get into the differences between the two or anything like that. But when I looked at it, I said, I could totally see on a centralized platform like YouTube, I could totally see them just up in the blue one day saying, um, we, we won't let vaping or vaping associated things be on our platform. And if they did that, my channel, everything would be gone on it. So I decided that I didn't want to build a platform on that because I just don't know where the future will be in that particular um, area. So I actually stopped doing it, even though I was getting, the, I was happy with the views that I was getting. I was happy with the comments I was getting. I was happy with the community I was talking to. Um, I said, I don't, I just don't want to put in all that work to have it taken away from me. And um, so then I started to look more into copyright strikes versus claims. And I found some articles and stuff. And this is where uh, I said at the beginning, put your tinfoil hat on. Listen to me the whole time. Get your tinfoil hat on, okay? Now, I talked about how The Verge, if you look around, The Verge right now appears to be just terrible. Terrible company, terrible thing, terrible what they're doing, terrible on these strikes. Um, I keep hearing things about the, the Streisand effect, right? So the Streisand effect is uh, you try to cover up one thing and all you do is make everyone notice that one thing right instead of just kind of like we just ignored it and let it go away and i think that that's totally the case right now because one i had no clue what the verge was i've seen articles and stuff like that didn't really know there's a youtube channel never really knew the website or anything like that now in literally 48 hours i know a ton about the verge i've seen their youtube channel i've seen some of the stuff that they have i know so much about um this particular issue that had they never struck anyone and just let it ride it out, I never would have known any of this. Never, I would have been oblivious to any of this. I had never seen any of the critique videos, never heard of the critique videos, never saw the tutorial video. The tutorial video, the originals have been pulled. Uh, I never saw any of this stuff. So with the Streisand effect, had they not done what they did, I never would have known any of this. And I know there's other people that never would have known any of this. And I actually, I want to call out Boogie on, on a near quote that he said was... Um, he talked about the Streisand effect, and then he said, uh, near quote, I made a video on this, and now you are too. And when he said that originally, I laughed. I'm like, I'm not going to make anything on this. Like, what would I say? What would I commentate on this? Like, I'm not going to do that. And a day later, I am excited to make this podcast. I was shaking to make this podcast. I, I was blown away. I was like, I can't, I can't wait to do this. Like I am so ready to do this. I, my notes are scribbled chicken scribbled on a piece of paper right now. I don't even have them like well typed out or formulated or anything like this. I scribbled on a notepad, what I was going to say and how to keep me in line because I was so excited to do this. And, um, the reason being is, um, this might be bigger than what we're actually being led to believe that it is is that this is the tinfoil hat time guys um is that what we're seeing now is this company that produced a really terrible video got called out on it and they're being big bullies to youtubers that's what it appears right now that they're just bullying other youtubers slamming people with strikes and uh, just bullying their way through it, abusing the system to bully their way through it. And that's what it appears. If you watch these videos, read these articles, hear what's going on, that's what it sounds like. And that's what I thought at first. And that's why I was like, why would I really elaborate on that? Everyone has kind of beat this horse dead on this one. There's nothing that I could add to this. And then when I was uh, looking up articles, I found uh, an article about copyright strikes. And uh, the article is uh, labeled... YouTube's copyright strikes have become a tool for extortion. And the article explained how it's, um, there are YouTubers that are getting hit 
uh, rapidly with two strikes and then being threatened for a third strike, which a third strike will take down your channel. Okay, so they're being hit with two strikes and then being threatened to hit with a third unless they pay pay to have the strikes avoided. And um, so I kept going through the article and I'm like, well, that's I mean, that's terrible. Like, it sounds like a really shitty system is in place. If, th if this can happen, which I had a strike against my YouTube channel on a video game that I played and I was like, what? You know, and I just I, with, with like 90 follow 90 subscribers at the time, like whatever, I don't even care. Um, but uh, for somebody who this is their career, strikes hurt. They can hurt you bad. Nothing like having two strikes, waking up every morning wondering if I'm going to have a job tomorrow, right? I couldn't imagine. I couldn't be a, a YouTuber having two strikes and just, especially having two strikes and somebody threatening me with a third. This is my job. This is my career. I have to start over again if this happens. This is, that's scary. And the article explained it's, it's fairly easy to do it fairly easy to strike a, to, to get a strike put on a video or strike put onto a channel and for the content creator it's incredibly difficult to remove that strike and to remove it in a timely manner so you can continue to monetize and continue to produce your videos and continue to work and feed your family and um i was like well yeah look at this article like Man, I wonder. I wonder if if um, if The Verge is just trying to knock out some of their competition. And when I went to cite my source, the article is from The Verge. The Verge produced an article on how easy it is to strike a channel and how hard it is to unstrike a channel. Okay. They produce this. I, 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 I'm telling you, this is where my excitement comes in for this. The article was produced on the 11th. The strikes started happening on the 12th. Everyone is talking about Verge is striking people, and, and they're they're essentially censoring their their competition, and they're being big bullies, and. They produced an article just the day before about how easy this was to do. Tinfoil hat time. Are they doing this? Not to say that that tutorial build was the step in all this. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that right now, did they just come on to something and figure out a way to prove it? Are they the Robin Hood of this, actually? Are they taking a hit for the team? Are they putting these strikes out so that everyone will acknowledge and call them out on these strikes? Because that is what people are doing. It is all over the feeds right now. People are calling them out so hardcore on it. Are they producing these strikes to prove how easy it is to strike a channel, knowing it's covered in fair use law, knowing that these other content creators didn't do anything wrong? just to prove how easy it is to strike a channel and how hard it's going to be for them to unstrike these channels. Are they actually the Robin Hood of this? Are they actually trying to force YouTube to do something different to protect, to protect the content creators, to protect these companies? Because the truth is, what would stop this from happening to The Verge? What, what would stop people from striking some of their videos, right? Did they sit down and do this article? Did they realize that, oh, crap, yo, we could get struck. Like, the way the system is in place, we have a ton of videos. We could totally get hit with three three strikes in a couple of days with no problem. Like, it's so easy to strike someone. Are they taking this approach because this will snowball? This has snowballed so much that is this... Is this, is this the start to force YouTube to do something different to help protect the content creators, to get something on our side? Because right now, the way it's set up, it's not on our side. You can have your channel shut down so fast through these strike systems, get demonetized, have pause in your demonetizations, not be able to live stream. Um, over, uh, Paul was talking about Kyle on Bitwit. They, they live stream. Well, now Kyle can't do his live stream. He may not be able to do his live stream because he's got a strike right now. That's a monetization problem. That's a huge monetization problem right now. And that was simply by one strike. No problem. They did it very easily from the verge, knowing that this was just a critique video. 
And um, when I saw this article, when I saw this, I was like, wow, all the sheep. And I, I just, I know my thought in my head was all the sheep are running this way. And I just looked at them, realized it, and took a left freaking turn because I haven't heard of anyone take this perspective on this. Uh, I've only heard right now content creators saying the Verge is a bully. They're striking everyone. Strikes are bad. It's harming us. Da 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 da. But nobody's like, hey, we need to fix the strike system. Like, here's the problem with the strike system. Here's what's going on with the strike system. And something has to be get done. And if they do this, and there's so many big content creators, big and little content creators being hit right now. This information is snowballing so much. Is this what will make YouTube have to change that strike system to do something to help protect the content creators? Did they kind of just take one for the team? Because you know with their PR, this is a nightmare right now. You know this is harmful. This is, this is not helpful to The Verge right now. So are they taking one for the team or... Is this just also a convenient perspective on this, you know? And uh, with companies, like, you never know what people think sometimes. You never know the full thought that sometimes go into things. I feel like, I feel like, again, I heard other content creators say it. This is a PR nightmare. This is, like, the worst thing you can do, this Streisand effect. If you were trying to make this video go away, don't stir the dust. Don't bring it back. Just, this happened in September let it go away the worst thing you can do is in february bring it all back to mainstream media but why are they doing it then why why would they do that it's harmful to the channel it's harmful to bring up everything that literally was going away i had never heard of this and now this is all i see on my feeds so uh yeah that was uh once i saw that article once i read that and saw who it was from because it's not like this was just some other article. This was from them. They produced this article and the next day started striking people. That can't be that convenient. Give me a break, man. That can't be that convenient. So what do you think? What do you guys think? Do you guys think that I am just freaking off my rocker? Or do you think that I just happened to stumble across something? That, again, this is so new that I'm sure somebody else, a big, big name person, will probably pick up on this much faster. Um... But do you, do you think that I'm off my rocker? Do you agree? Do you think that maybe they're just calling out YouTube and taking a hit doing it for the strike system? Because they know it's going to get reversed. I can't imagine that they don't think that these won't get reversed. These were critique videos. The, these are covered under fair law. They, they, they weren't copying or cloning over the videos. They weren't monetizing off of their production. They were doing critiques on it. It's over in fair law. They're a big YouTube channel. They're, they're not novices to this they know how this works so are they calling out is this a call out on youtube and are they just kind of taking that hit for it and if so are they going to be the rock stars that like we don't know because even at the end of the day unless big big names come out and say you know let's say youtube does change their strike uh procedures based off of this incident right here do you think that people will come out and go, whoa, The Verge is actually the hero in this, but they had to, they had to rob Peter to do, they, not Peter to pay Paul, but they had to, they had to Robin Hood this. They had to be the criminal. They had to be bad to be the good guy for the better of society on this. They had to help the content creators by harming some content creators temporarily to do this. And it sucks. It can be very harmful. However, in the long run, think about these other these channels that maybe right now are going to have an issue. But imagine the issues they could have had later on, even bigger issues later on. If this gets fixed now, they are now protected later on. So I don't know, man. I just don't know. I'm going to keep researching it. But I want you guys to give me some feedback. What do you guys think? Am I off my rocker? Or do you guys agree? Is there things that I missed on this? Did, did I get dates wrong on something? Like, this is just all over my feeds right now. And um, I just, it's it's wild. This is wild. This may be just so much more than a couple of strikes. A dirtbag company, a couple of strikes. This may be just so much, so much more. Well, that's all I've got in this episode. I had an excellent time talking about it. I hope that you had an excellent time listening to it. If you want to see me live, I'll probably be picking my nose, burping and farting. You can find me over on twitch.tv uh, uh, twitch slash medicx21. 
I do have a YouTube channel, MedicX21. I don't really do anything on it right now. I might put the podcasts on it, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'd hate to get demonetized. Um, and uh, share. Help me Help me spread this podcast. Share my podcast. Provide me feedback. Let me know what I can do to make it better. And uh, if if you thought this was a good episode, if you thought this episode was good, please share it. Please send it to the big guys, send it to the big streamers, send it to the big YouTubers, send it to the big podcasters, tweet it out, get it out. Did we stumble across something here, guys? Till the next video, I will catch you guys later on.